So, we've all been depicted on Saturday Night Live. You, me, Eric. Which one do you think is the most accurate depiction, and which one do you think is the least accurate depiction? So, as you know, I hosted Saturday Night Live. It was amazing, by the way. And if you was... haven't watched that, you must go check it out. And was the topic for many years before I ever did the political thing. Uh, many years, it was a topic on Saturday Night Live. But I really don't watch it anymore. Uh, I don't find it funny. Rarely do I find it funny, but I don't find it funny. Uh, I find it very mean-spirited. I find it a, a DNC affiliate, mm -hmm. the DNC, right? And uh, I think it's uh, — I just don't think it's a good show. I really don't. I don't see a lot of talent. Uh, I think that uh, the person that portrays me is — Terribly untalented. He's no Daryl Hammond. To have, Daryl Hammond was good. Daryl Hammond was great. They used to have Daryl Hammond, and they, he was great. Do that thing. Go ahead. You're fired. And they had others too, but uh, Daryl Hammond was great. Uh, but uh, no, it's it's not it's not a good depiction, in my opinion. But there's nothing funny. It used to be a funny kind of a thing, and uh, it's just there's n just just nothing going. They do it on PR. They do it on something. Maybe they do it on the fact that it's been there a long time. At one point, it was going to be taken off. I think if I didn't win or if I didn't run, I don't think it would be on the air anymore. I, and I don't say that in a braggadocious way. I don't think it would be on the air anymore. Go ahead. If you don't run for a third term, he's, he's, done, he's doing a good interview. I was, when you're done in five years, what do you want to do afterwards? What do you do after this? I think what I'll do is just sit back, relax, and enjoy watching a great country. And hopefully we'll have somebody in that's going to keep it great. But this country is going to do so well. We did it once, and we're going to do it again. And we're doing it in very good style. We're doing it at a level that nobody thought possible. The job numbers came out last week, and they were through the roof. Had to double check those numbers, because that was absolutely not what we were expecting just now. And the markets are, are reacting. Yeah. Incredible. It's a remarkable morning for the economy and for markets as the jobs number, of course, comes in much better than expected. A gain of 2.5 million, a gain of 2.5 million. The fact is, is that uh, we're back. It's going to continue and hopefully we're going to have a tremendous victory. We're going to have a safe country. We're going to have a country based on uh, lots of good things, fairness, equality and also law and order. And uh, we're doing really very well. I hope you sit back and you're going to be proud of what's happened because you've really helped me a lot. And I say that uh, truthfully. Uh, the family's been great. Kimberly's been great. Uh, I've had so much uh, support from the family. But we're going to have a tremendous success. I did it once. We had the greatest numbers we've ever had. African-American employment, if you look at that, employment and unemployment. But if you look at Asian, if you look at Hispanic, if you look at women, if you look at any group, uh, young people without a diploma, people with diplomas, everything, every single group, they were doing better than they've ever done. And then one day, the Chinese plague came over, mm -hmm. and I had to close the country. And we saved millions of lives by doing that. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. We saved millions of lives. Potentially, I don't even want to tell you what the numbers that I've heard. But at a minimum, it would be a million to a million five, as opposed to 150, 175, when it dies out. And it is dying out. The numbers are starting to get very good. Uh, but I think that uh, we will do it very rapidly a second time, much more rapidly. Uh, one of the reasons that we're doing so well is we built a tremendous base. We had a great foundation. So when we said, let's go, open, and we're having a lot of resistance from Democrats that are keeping their states the closed. Days. They're keeping their states closed. They let Seattle be taken over. Think of it. Seattle, yeah. a great yeah. city. A big chunk of Seattle taken over. And the news doesn't want to write about it. You rarely see, or you certainly see very little about it in the lamestream media. Yeah. So I will tell you that we are going to have a country that's going to be back so fast, and it's already happened. Well, I've always said that. If Joe Biden had the answers to these problems, why didn't he do it in the first 50 years of his career? Well, he had a long time to do a lot of things, and he didn't, and he's certainly not in condition to do it now. He is not equipped 
to do it. He's not equipped. I want to. I don't want to go further than that. When you say, "Give me a definition of equipped," I'm not going to give you that definition. But I think everybody else knows what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about very well. Uh, he's in no condition to do it, and everybody knows it. And Chi he's China's dream. Yeah. What you told me about Osama bin Laden, I'd like to see that. Yeah. Because that's an incredible statement. But that's true with China. That's true with everybody. Iran? That's true with North Korea. Look what I've done. North Korea, we would be in a war. We would have been in a war if Hillary got in. Yeah. And now we're talking, we talk, talk, talk. And that's fine. You talking know? back about the economy, nine out of ten of the largest cities in this country are run by Democrats who are appointing their leaders, who are making decisions, and yet the media still wants to try to blame you for their failures. How is that possible? How do they get away with it? And what would your message be to those people who live in those cities, uh, who have been ruled by Democrats, in some cases for over 100 years, who so, are trying to throw the blame elsewhere? So the cities that are having trouble are Democratic-run cities, meaning Democrats. Yes. And, you know, the word is the Democrat Party. It doesn't sound as pretty, but that's the, But the Democrat-run cities are the ones that are having the trouble. It's a very simple thing. You look at Seattle, you look at when you go to Minnesota and you take a look at what's taken place there, it's incredible. They tried to take over a great city, Minneapolis. And they have taken it. I took it over until I said, you have to bring in the National Guard. When the National Guard went in, it was like so beautiful. One evening, all of a sudden, you saw them lining up and it was all over. So uh, it's a very sad thing. but. I happen to think it's it's explaining to people that are getting ready to vote on November 3rd that there's only one answer, and you cannot go back to uh, the bedlam. That would because you would have this whole country. The country, I don't believe, would ever recover from it. You'll have a situation like Seattle times a thousand. The country would never — it will never survive it. it well, it sort of feels it. like this election really is — you know, it's the last, the last hurrah of the swamp of the establishment. How do you combat that? How do you get people to understand that message? Because when I look at your accomplishments, they're incredible. You've delivered for America for the first time in modern political history, done the things you said you were going to do. At the same time, what people I don't think give you credit for is that you did that under unprecedented circumstances, under unprecedented resistance. You had nonsense impeachments. You had three years of Russia hoaxes. You had everything working against you, and you were still able to do it. Do you think that this election sets a different tone that would actually maybe get, I don't know, say the Democrats to actually work with you on things? So I think if we win, the answer is yes. But I think regardless, we're going to have a tremendously successful country. I think that our country is going to be stronger than ever before. I think that next year is going to be a tremendous success. I feel that if the Democrats get in, we are literally going to end up in a recession slash depression, the likes of which you've never seen. There will be tremendous negative growth. There will be tremendous uh, bedlam all over the place. There won't be law and order. You'll have, you'll have a Seattle. You'll have a Minneapolis like you've never seen before. The whole country will be Minneapolis. And we saved it by me enforcing and sending the troops in, the National Guard. I insisted on it. But that was after four days. They should have done it on night number one instead of having the police run down the street, run away, give up the precinct. Nobody's ever seen a thing like that. So I think that uh, — I think we're going to have a tremendous success. I think we'll — actually, I think by that time, the Democrats are just going to say, let's work with the president. Well, it's interesting. So if we're talking about Democrats, what would you say to the, the Bernie Sanders supporter, the guy that feels that Bernie got, you know, gypped uh, in, in his race? I mean, do you, have a, do you have an outreach to them to bring them over to our side? Because it seems like on certain things, whether it be trade, that there's actually some similarity in those policies. So last time I got a lot of Bernie Sanders voters, as you know, mm -hmm. a very good percentage. People were shocked, mostly because of trade, because one thing Bernie was right on was trade. He said that everybody in this country is being hurt badly by our trade deals. They're so bad. And I get a lot of support from Bernie Sanders. I think I'm going to have it again this time. If you look at what's happened, and they talk about the popular vote, which would be much easier for me. I'd campaign a whole different way. Uh -huh. But they talk about — they talk Jill Stein. 
Hillary lost some votes to Jill Stein, let's assume. But I lost far more votes to Gary Johnson running on the Libertarian Party. They got four or five percent. Had I gotten those votes, I win the popular vote. But I never went for the popular vote. I only went for the Electoral College. We have tremendous support in this country for what we're doing. And it'll go on, and it'll be more and more successful. I'm telling you, next year will be one of the most successful years in the history of our country. I think it's great, and I, I agree, because those policies have worked. So to finish up, a couple, two last questions I have for you. I've heard from some of our mutual friends that you don't love my beard. But given the quarantine, I'd like to know, between myself, Ted Cruz, and Rand Paul, who all have all grown sort of quarantine beards, who's his best and why? Well, I don't like it on you, as I've told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's fine if you want to do it. I'm a, uh, I'm a libertarian in that way. You can do you whatever are. you want. But I don't like it on you. I think that Rand and Ted look better without it. Both friends of mine. They're both doing a fantastic job, and they're both defending me all over the place. Huh? Good-looking guys. I think they both look better personally without it. Mm -hmm. But I also think that they should do what they want to do, and that's what they'll do. Um, and in some cases, I think it's good. But in your cases, get rid of it. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, don't worry, guys. I'm going to get the follow-up call on this one later on. But uh, So last question. Before you leave office, will you let us know if there's aliens? Because this is the only thing I really want to know. I, I want to know what's going on. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I know, yes. it sounds almost ridiculous, no, but it's actually sounds, the real question I want to know. It sounds like a cute question, but it's actually, there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but it's very interesting. But Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. So you're saying you may declassify? No. You'll, you'll, you'll take it? Well, I'll, I, I'll have to think about that one, right? Uh, I'll well, have to think about it. All right, so a couple of weeks ago, I found myself to be the subject of a, a pretty big meme that went around because I asked and made a joke on a radio show about you possibly pardoning the Tiger King. Have you familiarized yourself with the situation, and is there a possibility for a pardon? Well, based on my relationship with you, I have. <laughs> he is quite a character. He, he certainly he is. He is quite a character, but you wouldn't want me to say that. But uh, that's a whole strange deal going on, I'll tell you. That's a strange guy and a lot of strange people surrounding him. And it was interesting. I got to see a couple of those episodes. It's interesting. Yeah, it was funny because I, I was watching, obviously, sort of binge to watch it because of the quarantine. Uh, and then when they asked you that thing and you're just on there at the press briefing at the COVID thing. And of course, you know, they don't ask you real questions. They ask you the, yeah. the nonsense. But it was pretty funny which, when it was, that sounds like Don. It must be Don. I had a feeling it was Don. Is that what he said? Had to be done. And I was like, yeah, I, I think he understands me well. I, so uh, I, I think I do understand you well. Y you and you're do. doing a great job. Thank you, Dad. And you are too. Uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, and I really hope you have a great Father's Day as well. Good. Thank you very much.